So yeah. So this so this third point is that if you're seek if you're an, an international regime or rule or treaty, if it's seeking to actually bind and limit um, the 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 powers and the weaponry of of the most powerful states, well, that's really impossible to do, really tragically, because who can force, for example, a state like the U.S. to do anything? You know, you can. Um, the U.S., for example, could try could could try to force Iran to abandon its nuclear program because it's more powerful than they are. But who can force the U.S. to reduce its nuclear stockpile? So this again is is a kind of inherent problem with any attempt at arms control based on treaties and so on, is that there's no real enforcement mechanism against the most powerful state. Okay, <clears throat> and then the fourth reason arms control is so difficult, according to Hayward, is this problem of so-called rogue states. I don't buy this at all, by the way, but I will, I will, I will present the argument. Um, the argument is rogue states are, and this is a quote from Hayward, by their nature not susceptible to the pressures that are constructed by security regimes. So there's an argument here, when you sign up to an agreement like the Non-Proliferation Treaty or something, there, there's an idea that kind of um, countries that value their place in the so-called international community, they want to project an image of themselves. It's important to them that they're perceived by the rest of the world as a law-abiding, you know, morally um, upstanding member of the international community. And therefore, it's in their interests to adhere to whatever agreements uh, they sign up to because they're concerned about their about their image. But the idea of a rogue state is a rogue state doesn't care about any of that. A rogue state um, does not have any, doesn't attach any significance to abiding by the rules of the so-called international community. It thumbs its nose at the international community. Um, <clears throat> so as, as examples he gives um, Iraq's covert nuclear program that was discovered after the first uh, attack on Iraq in 1991. Um, uh, and it's failure to disarm, um, or failure to fully disarm, well, it did more or less fully disarm, um, but the argument goes, the suspected failure of Iraq to disarm was what part of the driving force for the Iraq war in 2003. Um, you can look at Iran then, their uranium en enrichment program, um, and heavy water production plant to get technical for a minute, light water reactors tend to be for nuclear energy, heavy water reactors tend to be for nuclear weapons. Um, so the discovery of a heavy water production plant and uranium enrichment program by the International Atomic Ed Agency, Energy Agency uh, in 2003 um, is another example of, of a so-called rogue state not really interested in abiding by the rules of any international regime. Um, and again, we can look at North Korea, uh, <clears throat> who, as I said, withdrew from the Non-Proliferation tr Treaty in 2003, and in 2006 detonated a nuclear device. Um, and now, in, in just just last year, they've uh, successfully tested, it is thought, their first long-range intercontinental ballistic missile. Um, however, this whole taxonomy, if you like. A taxonomy is like a categorization of different types of something. So this whole taxonomy of states into the international community who abide by civilized norms and blah blah blah, and on the one hand, and then rogue states like Iran and Iraq and North Korea, on the other hand, there's an argument, and to be fair on Hayward, he addresses this, and in his words there's an argument, this, this very concept, this very taxonomy is, quote, driven by Eurocentric perceptions and assumptions. In other words, there's an underlying, basically racist or at least colonial minded mentality behind this division of the world into the international community who uphold international norms like US and Britain and so on, and rogue states who don't. There's this underlying idea that somehow certain basically European or white, if you like, states are rational and can be trusted with nuclear weapons. And then there are other states, basically states of the global south, effectively non-white states, 
who are irrational and should not be trusted uh, with nuclear weapons, and these are the rogue states and, and so on and so forth. Um, so this argument has been criticised, this idea that you know rogue states mean that arms control is impossible um, because the very concept of rogue states as opposed to these law-abiding, supposedly law-abiding states like US and UK is an argument this whole category of rogue states is itself a false category, if you like. Um, 